Okay, welcome back again to the Horn Notes video podcast. This is part two of our conversation with Alex Manners about uh, published horn warm-up routines. Um, so we've got four more to look at, which are more recent publications. Um, so first again, welcome, Alex. Oh, thanks. Uh, I should say Dr. Manners, as you are. Um, so what's the, the next one we're going to look at? Okay, uh, so the next book, uh, we're fast-forwarding to 1983, uh, and we're talking about uh, Progressive Studies in Flexibility and Range Development for French Horn by Fred Teuber, uh, which is still in print from Medici Music Press. Uh, it is a really kind of an interesting book, I think. Uh, unlike the last book that we talked about in the first podcast, uh, which was uh, uh, for Stanley's book, uh, Stanley expected you to go through the entire book. Teuber actually... Uh, lays out specific routines for different uh, ability levels uh, where he expects you to just play portions of the book. And so it's a completely kind of different uh, focus and intent. Uh, so, so I think the organization uh, just makes it worth it somewhat. Uh, but he actually divides his, his book into categories. And so you have exercises which cover flexibility, range development, uh, interval studies, scales, and what he calls natural horn studies. Uh, which end up being kind of lip slurs with different valve combinations. And uh, it's the natural horn studies that I actually find really, really interesting. Um, uh, he's, so th these are found at the end of the book. And, uh, sorry, as I'm flipping there. Well, I think it's interesting, too. He's he's laid this out. So it's so every other warm-up book we've looked at so far, I mean, the, of course, the Schuler that could be done by any level pretty much because it's just so sort of freeform. The other ones are all kind of sort of uber warm-ups for like, you know, really, really good players. Whereas this seems like you, he's, he's aiming it for like any level of player with, with a little modification. Sure. And, well, and, and, and he actually specifies actual routines that you could do if you are a uh, first or a second year student. I mean, so it, it's very clear that the intent, and, and I'm sure he used this or uses this in his teaching. Um, so, so, so there are the, the kind of natural horn studies at the end. Another interesting part of this book is that he actually uh, provides exercises that work different intervals. Uh, so he has exercises that work fourths and fifths and sixths. Uh, so that's kind of interesting if you're mm. trying to, to drill those into a student. Yeah. No, that, so it's, a, it's also a pretty slender publication. I think this is getting towards sort of a modern era of uh, self-publishing a little sure. bit when it's coming out as well. So the next one on our list is the Freudist book, um, which is like a, a book. I mean, it's a great book first. I mean, it's just a, a good read. And it's got a lot of interesting stuff in it. Um, and I personally, I like several things in her warm up a lot. Uh, well, let's uh, talk about Freudus. Yeah. And, and again, uh, I mentioned this with the, the Farkas book, but if you don't own this, just just as a, as a serious horn player, I think it's really worth owning. Uh, so she actually, uh, she presents her warm-ups uh, with different concepts um, and, and, uh, and also borrows a lot from other instruments. And she credits uh, several players, including Arnold Jacobs and James Stamp, uh, for uh, inspiring exercises that she presents uh, within the warm-up. But she actually starts with uh, free buzzing, so, so no, mouth, no mouthpiece buzzing. And she was one of the first authors that I found uh, to, to even talk about buzzing, but definitely to talk about free buzzing and give specific exercises that you can do. And then she also includes uh, mouthpiece buzzing exercises. Uh, yeah, well, and right after that, she's got a section that has lip bends. And yeah. I like the lip bends thing a lot. I, I don't know who first has that as well. I know it does show up in a few other books, but um, the way presented here, I, I really like the like so the first beautiful tones on the horn. I regularly do that as my first beautiful tones on the horn. It's a great title for exercise, too. <laughs> well, and, and there's kind of a progression, too, from, from free buzzing to mouthpiece buzzing to playing on the horn. And it, it, it seems very, very logically presented. Uh, but she uh, uh, also includes uh, things like uh, trills and scales and flexibility exercises and range studies. Uh, it, it's just it's it's a well kind of uh, comprehensive warm up that that really uh, aids the student uh, as they're as they're learning to kind of warm up on the horn, I guess. Yeah, so that's good stuff. So the next one we have is is 
we're getting into the 2000s now with a couple of really recent publications. So the first one we have is the one by Marianne Hesse, uh, which actually has two publications, but we're focusing on the daily routines for the student horn player. So uh, let's talk about this one. Yeah, uh, this is a really interesting book. I think uh, it's just, it's solely routines. So she actually provides uh, eight different routines. Uh, and as uh, as was mentioned, I, there's, there's also a second book that's a little bit more uh, complex, which is basically kind of the same thing, but it's more for more advanced players. Uh, this particular one, uh, she gives multiple routines, uh, and there's actually a routine for a beginning player, for an intermediate player, and for an advanced player. So there's there's some uh, definitely thought of progression as the book goes on, but she also uh, includes routines that focus on air, uh, the overtone series, uh, ear training, uh, the B flat horn, and one that I found really interesting, which is a, a routine focused on duets, so uh, you can play with your student. Uh, so that's really interesting to yeah. me. Yeah, because that can like, you know, part of you're trying to set up intonation too, like in a warm up, and it's easy to just sort of warm up in your own little world, and then you're just not, you know, your own little world isn't necessarily in tune with anybody else's little world. So, yeah, the duet intonation is interesting stuff. It's well, and and uh, all the routines are really really balanced too. She's covering uh, a core set of uh, kind of tenets that include uh, things like long tones. Uh, buzzing, crescendo, diminuendos, lip slurs, accuracy, intervals. And so everything covers everything. It's just kind of a different flavor. So it's uh, if you have a student who's restless and uh, who gets bored easily. Wait, uh, wait, you mean somebody wouldn't want to do exactly the same routine for 10 years? Perhaps. I, I'm just suggesting. <laughs> no way. That's crazy talk. So it, it's really nice. And actually in the second book, she describes uh, that – as long as you're covering all these topics, you're free to kind of mix and match uh, from, from different genes. So you're creating even more possibilities uh, from the book. So it's a really, really interesting book. It's, it's still available in print from Mountain Peak Music, Daily Routines for the Student Horn Player. Yeah. So and the last one we have is the Eli Epstein uh, book, Horn Playing from the Inside Out. And I know for me, I have kind of a warm spot for this because I did study with Eli um, in between my master's and doctorate and, and there's a lot of interesting interesting stuff in here he's really figured out some things physiologically but um, to the warm-up specifically what what things would you like to highlight well I I really thought that this uh, this particular warm-up was was it, it's, it's super uh, easy to follow it's it's laid out well um, and, and for that alone, uh, I, I would really recommend this book for purchase, too. It's still available, I believe, from his website, uh, from Eli's website. Um, but his, his power warm-up, as he describes it, uh, it's kind of in the middle of the book. Um, and, and similar to Freudus's book, he, he starts with a buzzing section where he kind of progresses from uh, free buzzing uh, to uh, to mouthpiece buzzing to playing it on the horn. But he, he actually writes out exercises that you repeat uh, and do those three different ways. So that, that was kind of interesting to me, um, just to kind of think about that pitch, uh, your, your centering pitch, uh, even when your mouthpiece buzzing, and so that it matches when you're playing it on the horn. Uh, the, the second uh, exercise, uh, he's, he's doing long tones, uh, and uh, I, I think you have to kind of read the whole book to understand this, but he's, he's talking about different uh, varieties of, of milk and cream, uh, to talk about the um, to to visualize the uh, the fullness of, of of the long tone that you're playing, so it gradually changes over the life of the of the tone. Uh, so that that's really interesting. And he's talking about breath attacks too within the long tone section, which I think is interesting as well. Uh, and then he talks about uh, flexibility as well. Flexibility is the third third component, uh, and he uses uh, what he calls elevator floors. Uh, and elevator floors are essentially a concept of the book. It's talking about your uh, the placement of your jaw, uh, so that you're you're matching jaw placement uh, with different notes within the uh, the range of the horn. Uh, yeah, and and there's, there's, it has to do too with like just precision and accuracy. Being developing a very consistent approach to every note within his system. Um, even if you don't use exactly his system, you do want to develop a very consistent approach. Uh, which actually gets back to even to like Schuler's uh, sort of micro warm up. It's but he's definitely focusing on a consistency of, of approach to notes. So, so yeah. 
Yeah, but he he does uh, he lays out specific uh, draw position. Then he writes numbers above each note, which is kind of interesting to look at. And then uh, he has notated scales after that uh, that he wants you to play. So that's the fourth part. Uh, but what's kind of interesting about this book as well is he provides uh, cooldown exercises. Uh, this is one of the only books that I looked at, uh, and again I, I looked at almost forty uh, that provided cooldown exercises. That's something that a lot of players do. Uh, and so he actually gives you some thoughts on how to cool down. Uh, mm, yeah, and also right before that, I see he's got the short warm up, which I've used versions of his short warm up for years. Uh, not many teachers suggest like a short warm up, or they have like a second warm up or something. It's often kind of the uber warm up that's like the giant routine, long, long, long thing. Um, so there's like that side of warming up too. Well, and, and he specifies that this is for uh, maybe a 15 minute warm up later in the day. Uh, you know, if you need to re warm up or something, or you know, I, I'm sure none of us out there ever have situations where we only have 15 minutes no way. to warm up. So, <laughs> uh, uh, short warm up also a really really valuable inclusion, I think. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. So. Now, I know you've got a, a personal website. I, is some of this going to start showing up on there at some point? At some point. That, that's kind of my uh, long-term plan. I'm, I'm uh, alexmannershorn.com, um, and, and I'd like to develop a kind of warm-up section. And I, I've got some other things kind of kicking around. I, 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 I like to run. i kind of an amateur distance runner, and I'd like to write an article on how, to, how my running actually impacts my horn playing. And so I... Kind of have an article in development on that that I'd like to publish in Horn Call at some point. But yeah, no, that's that's all good stuff. And I mean, you know, again, this I think this study was a really interesting study. Um, the whole study itself, at some point, will be online. I don't think it's online yet. Um, if at some future point it is online, I'll I'll link it out of Horn Matters. Um, it will be online at some future point. I know that for sure because I signed the paperwork and I saw it. It's going to happen. Um, but with that, I guess that's about all for right now. Um, you got any uh, any other just a you know uh, this was a final little thing. I mean, you you know a lot of people they get real intimidated trying to figure out a doctoral project. I mean, any advice to the people is that maybe listening to this, thinking, wow, what's left to write about? You wrote about this. Well, I, I think uh, looking at, at what other people have done, uh, and, and that includes, uh, you know, obviously I've not done this project for the horn, uh, but I, I wasn't able to find anything for other instruments on warming up. So, I, I mean, I, I think if you can find, like, a similar project on trombone or something, even, even mm -hmm. doing something like that, and then just kind of following your interests, um, I think that's really interesting, too. Yeah, no, there's, there's these, I think the thing I felt when I was doing mine was, the more I looked at it, the more I realized there's all kinds of angles on all kinds of topics that haven't even been looked at at all. So don't be too intimidated by it. Just just kind of go go forward. All right. Well, thank you, Alex, for joining us. Oh, and, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, again, just be looking for more in his website on this, maybe an article at some point. And uh, thank you again. So uh, this is the Horn Notes video podcast. Be sure to check part one of the this interview out if you started with part two. And thank you for joining us and be watching for more.